first sight, the Faroe Islands make your heart skip a beat. Secluded in the North Atlantic Ocean, its striking mountains are cloaked in fog. There's not a tree or a person in sight. Hard to imagine for someone from the Philippines. And uh, I was looking, so, oh, there's no houses. <laughs> Where's the houses? <laughs> so I was just thinking. Many have never heard about this tiny country at the door of the Arctic Circle, especially in tropical Thailand. When I told my friend that I'm going to be in Faroe Island, they say, why you go to Egypt? <laughs> Egypt, yeah. <laughs> Home to only 50,000 people and 80,000 sheep, it's also cold and wet. It was raining <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and in darkness for more than half of the year. Winter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It feels very gloomy. Oh. Everything is like shock because we come from warm country and big country and then here is so small. But stay a while and something happens. In a place that seems like it's on the edge of the earth, women from afar are finding something they yearn for. I've come to find out what it is. Hundreds of women from Asia are moving to the Faroe Islands. And being from a warm climate myself, I can't understand how they survive one long, dark winter, let alone the rest of their lives. They marry Faroese men, often who they know little about. But don't assume they aren't in charge of their destinies. To find love, you have to take a risk. Hans Erland is the local running star, the pride of the islands and of his parents, Mary Joy and Dan Thompson. Mary Joy was one of the first Filipinas to move to the Faroe Islands more than 15 years ago. Mary Joy, where is this ring? Where is this ring? As a sign of my love As a sign. and loyalty. They married in the Philippines in 2002. Dan had written her love letters for two years after seeing a photo of Mary Joy babysitting her cousin's children. The cousin had also married a Faroese man. Yeah, he asked my address and he started writing to me. First, it was an introduction of himself, um, that um, he's single <laughs> and uh, that he has work and he owns a house and <laughs> all that. <laughs> trying to sell himself. <laughs> <laughs> One day he decided to come to the Philippines and uh, yeah, he proposed immediately and he wants to get married. And what did you think when you first saw him? It's okay. It's the same man as in the picture. One. <laughs> <laughs> Ten days after arriving in the Philippines, they were husband and wife. All right, Dad. Kiss the bride. Oh, the sun. <laughs> that is uh, not counting. Not counting. <laughs> yes, yeah, <it's> 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. Oh, it's too long. Oh. oh. <laughs> From barely knowing each other to today, they've come a long way. Hi guys, <laughs> how are you doing? Hi, yeah. Good to see you. What a beautiful place. This is where your boat is kept. Along with their athletic son, Hans Erland, they have two other children, Leah, who's 12, 
and Daniel eight. Great, thank you. I'm tagging along on this excursion while the boys try to catch lunch. Ciao. <laughs> Bye. Dan can trace his ancestry in the Faroe Islands back to 1850. They fished in these waters and they worked the land. Like most here, he's a man of few words. What made you want to go all the way to the Philippines to find Mary Joy? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was 30 years old, so I should have a wife and children. Uh huh. That's why. What did you say in that first letter? Oh. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> it's a secret. You don't want to tell me. <laughs> well, you must have said something right because she came back here to the Faroe Islands with yeah. you. Yeah, I think so. I said some, something right because yeah, because now it is like it is. And Does it feel heavy? <laughs> Nothing. The fish aren't biting today, and when it comes to my questions, neither is Dan. You Faroese men don't give up. <laughs> no, they're very patient. Very patient. Despite our best efforts at fishing, we return home empty-handed. But luckily, Mary Joy had defrosted the last catch, just in case. So what's in the sauce? It's Dan's sauce. <laughs> it's not your sauce? Oh, it's Dan's sauce, Dan's secret sauce. OK. And that's not all they've been cooking up. And you're pregnant? Yeah. You're expecting? Wow. Number four? yeah. In January? Yeah. Can I help with anything? Oh, the... It's not so hot. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, oh, it looks great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Yeah, i Mary Joy is clearly at home in the Faroe Islands. She speaks fluent Faroese, went to university here, and works as a supervisor at an after-school program for children and teenagers. How hard is the language? Yeah, it's very hard. <laughs> so I have to borrow dictionaries, different languages, mm -hmm. yeah, from different languages, and I have to. And it's not the, all the time that the Google Translate is working. It is not. I think you're very persistent mm -hmm. to do that. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And three children, and I work also sometimes. Wow. Mm. Mm. And Dan, where do you work? When they met, Dan worked at sea on a fishing boat. Mm -hmm. His trip to the Philippines to meet Mary Joy was his first to Asia. Oh, it was like an <laughs> um, adventure. <laughs> it was amazing. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now he works for the Faroe Islands Electricity Company so that he can be with the family at home. The cod is very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm very lucky to have Dan because he helped a lot at home. Mm -hmm. So, unless I will not be here. What's the main difference between Filipino men and Faroese men? Filipino men, they're more patriarchal. Their father is the head of the family and father decides and all. But here it's more equality. We both decide. <laughs> we, we both decide. Yeah. Mary Joy also wanted more opportunities than the Philippines could offer her. Is your life now what you imagined it would be, or has it turned out different? Yes, all as I planned. Women 
women like Mary Joy fulfill a big need on the Faroe Islands. Over the last decades, young women have been leaving in droves. Limited opportunities and a limited gene pool have meant that they've gone abroad, preferring more choice in life and love. There are now 1,500 fewer women than men between the ages of 18 and 60. So how do the men feel about it? She's gone. Oh, she's gone. She's Hi. So gone. Yeah, she's gone. Finna Koba is my guide to the Faroese male mind. I started here in Bringsnagro to 13, till here in the house of prison, it was very high up in the loft. So I asked him, how high are you? Let's see. The last one was really good. A journalist and a local rock star, Finn is one of the most eligible bachelors on the islands. So sky high is because there's so many... He says he's not worried about a shortage of women. He's not looking for love. But he wouldn't mind a female touch. I got a perfect bachelor pad for, yeah, almost the same price as this one. Really? Much better, much more posh. It's a bit bachelory. A bit bachelory. And I, I need someone to, you know, decorate for you. Decorate it and. Decorate or sweep? Sweep and decorate. <laughs> I'm not really the sweeping kind. No, okay. <laughs> Leaving my broom behind, I take up Finner's offer to visit his bachelor pad. It's a glorious evening drive. During summer in the Faroe Islands, daylight stretches for 20 hours. And when the fog lifts, the scenery is breathtaking. I'm looking forward to hearing more about what the modern Faroese man looks for in an ideal woman. Yeah. Hello. Hello. How Welcome. are you doing? Thank you. Welcome. This is the bachelor pad. This is the bachelor pad, yes. <laughs> Finner says he hasn't tried to find a woman from Asia, but he knows many men who have. Nice view. If the women aren't there, it's difficult, yeah? You can't invent a woman. So, yeah, you have to find the women elsewhere and the easiest way is uh, the Asian countries I think yes welcome to my terrace <laughs> he describes a trend among men his age to look for a match online I have a friend who um, who got his heart broken by a Faroese woman and he just said I have had enough so he uh, went to uh, on the internet uh, an agency foreign women from Philippines, and he found himself a Philippine girl. And uh, half, uh, yeah, six months later, she, she was in the Faroe Islands. And they live happily. She doesn't speak Faroese, so I haven't talked to her, but uh, he's found love and it's more simple, a simple life. What do you mean by the simple life? You know, where um, a life where, where uh, a bit more old fashioned, where, where there, where there's um, um, the man role, where the man uh, works, he works and he uh, makes the, all the money and, uh, and she uh, is at home making, uh, making him uh, dinner and breakfast and, uh, and cleaning. Sort of traditional roles. Exactly, yeah, traditional roles. What do you think about the women coming here? How do you think they see themselves in the society here? You know, it's, it's very difficult uh, because uh, especially the women from, from Asia, they don't really have a voice here in the Faroe Islands. We don't hear what they think that much. We don't hear them in the media. But you're the media? Yeah. Why don't you do stories We try, them? we really try. Yeah. Uh, and also, it's very easy for the media to, you know, just go after the bad stories, you know, mm. the problems. Mm. But there are really 
many love stories out there. There really are. To find out if that's true, I'm meeting some of the Faroe Islands' new female residents. Mary Joy was one of only a few foreigners when she arrived. Today, there are nearly 300 women from Asia living here. Hi, how are you? I'm Ella, nice to meet you. Hi, Hilda. Mary Joy introduces me to her circle, and I learn that as well as her cousin, her aunt, and her mother, have also married Faroese men since she moved here. And so this is your mother? Yes. Ah, oh, fantastic. Yes. <laughs> Do you like living here? Yes. Yeah? yeah? But it is very nice to stay here. Mm -hmm. It's peaceful. Mm -hmm. So it's like a family reunion? Yeah. yeah. The most common way for women to meet a Faroese man, I discover, isn't through the internet, but through other family members. We are sisters. Your sisters? Yeah. Are you married to brothers? No. <laughs> no. Unfortunately, her husband has no brother. <laughs> I come first here to visit her. Uh huh. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we have a friend. Uh huh. We just talk and. It's all started like that. Uh -huh. yeah. Often the women moving to the Faroes are not young brides, but women who are marrying a second time and starting afresh. And so you brought your children here? Yeah. yeah. And do they like it here? <coughs> yeah, they like it. And they meet a lot of kids now, and they are more happy and happy. And my girl, she don't want to go to Philippines now anymore. I'm touched by the honesty of Grace who came here six years ago to begin a new life with her Faroese husband. He's a nice guy, mm -hmm. always asking me, how you like me? And then I answer him, no choice. <laughs> <laughs> six years is not yet enough to know each other. Right. Yeah. Still, still yes, a so trial. More and more there is a chance. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know what's happened tomorrow, right? What about love? Oh, love, love is, uh, what is love? Love is <laughs> fantastic. Love is sometimes <coughs> sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These women rely on each other for moral support, friendship, and help navigating their new country. It's not always easy, but they're happy here and feel it's a good place to raise their children. Here is we are more safety. Philippines are more dangerous, mm -hmm. especially at the night time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are mm -hmm. safe here. And no one locks the doors? No one. No, no. <laughs> no one locks my door. <laughs> the car exactly. is open. Yeah, the, the car is open. Lock, then then it's okay. you are not no one is stored, no one something wrong is okay. Yeah. I think Faroe Island is the last paradise on this earth. <laughs> the last paradise? The last paradise. Very, very nice. But sometimes, there can be trouble in paradise. In the village of Hosvik, I meet Nam Phun Sawadi from mm. Thailand. For me, my experience with my ex is not, not easy. Mm. Ten years ago, she met a Faroese man through a friend in Thailand. She moved here and they married. Did you think it was going to be like a fairy tale? I was thinking like before I moved here, I was thinking like that it should be like a dream or something because I watch TV so much, te television so much, then I stuck with that picture, image, like it's gonna be like, wow. But when I be in here, everything just like, it's very hard time. Yeah. Yeah. Nam Phun is careful what she says. Her relationship ended badly, and the Faroe Islands is a small place. My love is not work out. So, me and my man is not work out. About four years ago, so we divorced. <laughs> but instead of going back to Thailand, Nam Phun decided to stay and build a new life on her own. Stand up for myself be strong for myself and 
I bought a house here and my car, and I have a good job. I have a beautiful kid. Her daughter Natasha is four, and her son Joseph is nine. <laughs> Nam Phun's mother, sister, and niece are visiting for the summer holidays. It's the first time she's had them here in her new home. I remember that uh, um, police, they call me, they say, now you get a visa, so you can stay here. Then I go back and asking, can you open the account for me because um, I want to work. And I asking where the fish company is. They told me the fish company that way, that way. And then I just go out and start work to the way they, they told me. They give you a job? Yeah, they give me a job. And how did you feel? Oh, so nice. <laughs> She's worked her way up, left the fish factory, and is now a manager at a local food business. Life finally feels good again. I can say this is my home. Because every day I'm more happy. I have like beautiful kid and good job. Um, I can manage myself. I can like take care of myself. What would you tell a woman who's thinking of moving to the Faroe Islands? If I can tell them, I want to say this country is very beautiful and then people is friendly. But if you want to find love, um, it's a good idea that you, you might to spend time and learn each other is more longer. You can, then you can decide. If everything is not work out, you have to be like strong woman. It's very hard time for you to start everything alone. The Faroe Islands is a place where the course of life has always been certain. We skulle si a friend of them. Hanna and Husa Brick to Shaun, Ata Unora Goto, Anta is a lunch you grew snow to stay in for much on the Uli, Cheyu Fushara Gomen. Yara Ferdinand Velu Setna. a place where each generation marked the passing of the one before. A place where tradition matters. Like the national festival Olasica, which brings everyone out to the streets to celebrate the long, bright summer nights. As they have for generations, the rowers will do battle at sea. And the runners compete on the land. But take a look at the winner of the under 17s. It's Hans Ellen Thompson. A sign that things are changing on the Faroe Islands. In this small, confident country, disagreements about allowing foreigners in are strikingly absent. In marrying a Faroe Islander, women from Asia get more than a husband or a family. They become part of a tribe. Perhaps that's why they stay, even if things go wrong. Against the odds, in the most unlikely destination, they find a place in their hearts they call home. Men take her to me, I, if I, at Sorgina, I, a Cambera, I won't lose it, me, he will like.